is a special request and I'm not going to say who the special request is from because I want to make sure that I'm respecting non-disclosure agreements but it was such a good special request that I thought to make a video because it was a really good question. So one of our YouTube friends reached out and said so I remember doing root cause analysis and right now I am working in a company that makes some kind of food and we get the incoming ingredient and the incoming ingredient, the, the total plate count, the bacterial values are coming in at a, a realistic value. And during processing, we're doing our normal routine processing. And then at the end, the bacterial levels are extremely high. What do we do? How do we go about doing this root cause analysis? And so, we did a bit of a walkthrough and just a reminder, uh, do take a look at the root cause analysis video if you haven't had the chance to see it. But uh, we, we walked through um, some problem solving to figure out how do you deal with this. And I thought, hey, this is a really great question. Let's do this up as a video. Now, I don't want to reveal who my friend was who reached out and I don't want to reveal anything about the, the company. So let's instead just talk about a generic model. Let's imagine we are a fresh cut vegetable facility. And one of the first things I said, as part of your root cause analysis, you want to get the, the process flow diagram. And, and I said, talk to your HACCP coordinator and find that process flow diagram. So as you remember from a HACCP generic model, you're going to have um, a product description of what you're making. You've got that list of incoming ingredients. That, in, that list of incoming ingredients can help you identify what do you need to be testing um, and do you need to test things as separate incoming ingredients or do you just trust that your supplier is providing you exactly what you're after. But more importantly, you need to get that flow diagram. And again, I just took, um, just for the sake of uh, Transparency, I took a flow diagram here from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. I realize this page has been archived, but there's nothing wrong with an old flow diagram that's well done. So let's jump out to my whiteboard here. Oh, there's my friend Tiny. Let's imagine it's Tiny's company and he is making fresh cut fruits and vegetables. So I've got my whiteboard here so I can scribble away as we're working here. So let's say we're receiving and let's say up here at receiving, we've got, I don't know, 100 CFUs per gram. These are fresh fruits and vegetables. And so we know that there's going to be a bit of a background in terms of um, bacterial counts and total plate counts. So at this point, let's say down here as, on the finished product, and we'll say at step 15, uh, prior to shipping, we're getting, let's say, I don't know, 100,000 CFUs per gram. Just, I'm just pulling numbers out of the sky. But somewhere in this process, something is going on. And we have to really think back to our root cause analysis. If you remember root cause analysis, we're thinking about, um, is it raw ingredients? Is it materials? Is it processing method? Is it something in the environment? Is it, um, is it uh, something within the, the employee training or handling? Is it something within the management system? We've got to think strategically. And the nice thing about this, this flow diagram is you can walk through meticulously and think about where could issues be going on. So for example, I see uh, right here, we've got an antimicrobial treatment. Do we have good records to make sure that that antimicrobial treatment is functioning exactly as it should be. So do we have logs within the documentation showing that antimicrobial treatment is functioning? Um, ideally, the nice thing about using a process flow diagram from your HACCP program is that you're able to identify CCPs that are going to be related to biological controls. And so whether it's an FSEP program, SFCR program, SGF program, 
they sh within that process flow diagram, you should be able to highlight where are biological process controls occurring so that you're going to pay attention to that point. So uh, we've got rinsing here as the second step. I realize I might not have selected these um, process controls exactly as they are, but you'll want to do a record check here as well. But what you would want to do if you were doing additional microbiology testing is see, you would start to bracket out your microbiology. What would happen if you were to do microbiology at this step and pull a sample there or at this step? The records check should be able to help you identify if your process control is functioning as it should be. Because again, the intent is to have a preventive strategy. You shouldn't have to go out and test things to death. You should be, know that your systems are functioning as they should be. But you, you can bracket it out and then perhaps do a microbiology check here to see at which processing step you may be introducing some sort of loss of control. Now, another thing that we discussed was the idea of sampling and could sampling programs be part of the confounding issue? So I'm going to just jump out here and have another new whiteboard. So let's bring my friend back because he gives me encouragement as we do all this work. So let's imagine my friend Tiny here was receiving his fresh cut. I don't know, maybe he's at a, at a plant and he's receiving totes of, I don't know, lettuce for his fresh cut vegetable program. There's my lettuces. Here's the challenge. If he needs to go in and do a sampling of this lettuce, how is he going to do that? In, in different commodities, there are different sampling programs. Now let's say, I'm going to change my marker color here. Let's say he has this tote of lettuce and he pulls this lettuce and he pulls that lettuce and he pulls the lettuce from down here and the lettuce from over here. But meanwhile, all of the contamination, let's make it green because it's gross. All of the contamination is over in this corner. How do we deal with situations of this sort. So here's, here's, the big, here's the big challenge. My friend Tiny here, he could be sampling his lettuce from all sorts of different locations within this, with this, within this tote for the incoming product, but not identify the contamination. And as soon as this lettuce is, let's walk back here and go back to the original whiteboard. Let's say he's receiving, he's receiving that fresh lettuce. It's going through inspection, sorting, and trimming, and first wash. So now we're taking all that lettuce. It's being dumped into a big, huge washing bin, and that contamination that's off in one discrete location within the tote now can start to be spreading. And so when we're thinking about going back to that, where do we bracket? You may be wanting to see if within certain processing steps. So for example, cutting, slicing, shredding, grinding. Now we are randomizing that discrete contamination from one location and spreading it across the entire batch. And so we want to be making sure that we've got appropriate process controls that are going to knock back some of that um, isolated and discrete contamination from dispersing throughout the entire batch. So, for example, if we're doing a washing step, what sort of what sort of appropriate interventions could we be doing as part of that? Are we are we uh, batching large large quantities of lettuce all together? Are we able to do smaller batches where we can test, for example, perhaps the rinse water to see if we've got um, bacterial contamination within that rinse water? I realize ATP might not work well on a uh, fruit and vegetable washing line, but are there other rapid methods that could be used for isolating and 
at discriminating uh, coliforms or other organisms within that within that product. Um, so can we can we instead of having large bulking operations, could we be minimizing the lot size so that we can we can isolate um, contamination within the within the system? Within these antimicrobial treatments, do we have validation against the capability of knocking back? Um, and so, uh, again, I, I can't declare exactly what uh, the industry was that my friend reached out about, but let's say we were in the, the lettuce industry. Do these antimicrobial treatments actually function as seen fit to be able to control this level of contamination? And so you may have really low intensity antimicrobial treatments because typically you've been assuming, oh, well, based off of our sampling programs, we're seeing really low in uh, incoming plate counts. Therefore, we don't need as an aggressive an antimicrobial treatment. But on the statistical opportunity that you have a mass contamination occurring, are your antimicrobial treatments sufficient and robust enough to knock back so if you've only got a two log reduction, but really you've got this sort of contamination occurring, your contaminant, let's, let's say this antimicrobial treatment was two log reduction. If this is typically what you've got, you've got going from 100 CFUs to um, one CFU per gram. But if really in reality, we've got two log reduction here, but our end, our end product is coming in at 100,000, what we really actually may have had is a gross contamination point where across and spread across that entire batch, we actually had 10 million CFUs because if we only had two log reduction here at this washing step or antimicrobial treatment step, meanwhile, if everything else within our system is functioning exactly as it should be, then you could be having much more gross contamination than you see. So do when doing that root cause analysis, you'll want to see if you can go in and do some sort of evaluation that your process controls were functioning as they are fit. Are your process controls indeed valid for the types of contamination that you may be seeing? And then go back and do additional investigation to see, one, are your sampling programs robust enough? Are they at the right point so that you would be identifying gross contamination? Are your process controls going to be uh, not just dealing with the normal situation, but also for emerging um, critical situations? So that that uh, odd time that you do have gross contamination within your product, is your process control going to be able to control that? So that was a great question, and I hope that this provided some interesting insight for you to be able to do additional root cause analysis for microbial um, sampling programs. Again, that was a really, really short and quick analysis with uh, the fact that we couldn't dig into uh, core details. Um, but yeah, I hope you had some fun with this. I like answering these sorts of questions. Uh, the students who are in my class know that I love going off on relevant tangents that support the learning and enhance the depth of the learning experience. So feel free to send me more tangents as we go along, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.